In this video, I'm going to show you with Next.js how you can have this language switcher. So for example, we have this drop down menu and we get all of the available languages. So we can come here, we're currently in Spanish. So as we can see, all of the content is in Spanish, but if I click on English, the content is now in English. And well, you can add as many languages as you want. Now, just as a side note, I have a whole video on internationalization with the app router. So if you're interested in how you can set up internationalization from zero, make sure to check this video out. But don't worry, you can still find all of these steps in the description where you will find a gist. So for this, we're going to be using next Intel, which is this library right here. Now this library requires you to set up a couple of things. So I'm just going to give you a general overview, but again, you can either check the gist or check the official documentation. So if I come here to the app directory, we have this local param and we wrap all of the application within this route. So this is how the library will send you the local to the components so that you can render the appropriate messages. So if I come here, we have this layout. And if I scroll down, we have this root layout and we basically wrap everything within this provider. And then we pass in the messages. So we use the get messages function from next Intel. And then we can also export the generate metadata, which is going to give you that title and the description for this page. So if I come here to my translations, as we can see, we have the title and the description, which map over to these two. We also have these i18n.cs file, which is here in the root, so right beneath source, and here we resolve the imports. So since I only support English and Spanish, well, I reference it from this directory, dot slash messages, and then we have English and we have Spanish. And so with this, we can get the request configuration, we get the params, which are denoted by this one right here. So remember this path, we get the params, we get the locale, which is of type string, and then we check if we support that locale. And if so, if we do not support the locale, we just throw a not found and redirect the user to a 404. But if we support this locale, then we get the messages from this directory here, so these ones, and we return them, which will be passed over to the layout. So here, when we say await get messages, we're getting the messages that we resolve here, basically. And then we have this middleware. So we pass in the available locales, in my case, just English and Spanish, we pass in a default locale. So for the case where the user does not have the locale for English or Spanish, then it is going to default to English. And then we have this locale prefix. So this locale prefix allows you to have this slash n and then about. In the case of Spanish, then slash s and then about. So this is a way for you to always show it in the params. So you could have a never or you could have an always, etc. You can find this information in the documentation. In my case, I set it to never because if I come here, I do not want to have the prefix. My application is not a landing page or a static website. It is an application similar to a mobile one. So I do not want to populate the URL with slash n and slash s. So I'm handling everything via the cookie that the middleware is setting for us. So here, just export the full function, which is the middleware. And then we return the next Intel middleware and we pass in the request, which is going to get that information for the locale. And well, then here in the root next config, we have next Intel config and we just wrap all of the configuration with this one, as simple as that. Now the library by default, as I told you, handles everything via the locale. So here slash n or slash s or whatever. But since I'm not using that, if I come here to the official documentation, we have never use a local prefix. If you're building an application behind an authentication layer, which is precisely what I'm doing, there is no need for SEO. So we can configure the middleware to never show a local prefix in the URL. So here we can say create middleware like I did, then we can pass in local prefix and then never. So it is never going to show it here. 
And as we can see, in this case, requests for all locales will be rewritten to have the locale only prefixed internally. You still need to place all of your pages inside a locale directory for the routes to be able to receive the locale param. However, there is something important, and that is, if you do not use domain-based routing, the cookie is now the source of truth for determining the locale in the middleware. So if I come here and inspect element and then come here to the application tab and then come here over to cookies as we can see we have the next local cookie which is handled automatically by the library and as we can see it is in english if i were to modify this to be spanish instead and then refresh as we can see the content is now in spanish so since we're not using the local prefix, that means that the source of truth is this cookie. So that gives us the control to be able to switch between languages with this. Because instead of rerouting to the slash n or slash s, all you need to do is update the cookie accordingly. So if I come here to this drop down menu, and if I click on English, as we can see, it is updated to be English. So how do I handle this logic in the client? Well, if I come here to the header, I'm rendering the language picker. And the language picker is just a drop-down menu. We have the button with the globe icon, and we have the content of the drop-down menu. Now for this, I'm using Radix, especially from ShadCN, which is Radix but styled, but you can use MUI, Chakra, whatever you want. And then I have the label, language, and then I have the checkbox items. So we have for English and we have for Spanish. And when I click on them, it is simply going to change the cookie. So next locale is equal to the new locale. And then will the path to be the root, then maxage, and then same site lux. And then we use router from next navigation. And then I say router.refresh. And well, this is going to load the messages for this locale since I believe this library is going to get the messages per request. They are not in the client side. They are all in the server, although I may be mistaken. So make sure to check out the documentation for that. And well, I have the locales defined within this file. So locales, export const locales, English, Spanish as const, and then export locale is type of locales at a number. So we get that union, English or Spanish. And that's pretty much it. We just update the cookie, we refresh, and we get the updated messages. As simple as that. So as you can see, it's not complicated whatsoever. So now you can effortlessly switch between the two. Now, lastly, this is a bonus. This doesn't really have to do with language switching, but what I like to do is collocate my files. I want to have everything be as close as possible. So for example, if I have this button right here, I would like to collocate the translations to that file because, well, the translations pertain to that component. So as we can see, we have this button, we use translations, we pass in the identifier, and then we say plus, and then T, and then label. So how can you collocate them? Well, if I come here, as you can see, we have the English and Spanish files. So they are tightly collocated to this component. Every time I modify these files, I have a script, which you can find in the gist, which is going to process them. So it is going to search for all of the translation files. So all directories named i18n. And then it is going to grab each locale, such as this one, so English and Spanish, and it is going to search for the corresponding files. And then it is going to merge all of them to this root file. So we have messages and then English and Spanish. So every time I modify a file, I run this script. And if I come here to my package.json, I have this i18n merge. And then I pass in TSX, which is a utility to run TypeScript files without emitting the JavaScript files. And then I target scripts and then merge i18n. That way I do not have to modify the root files, which would be very cumbersome. Instead, I can create the i18n directories like this one, allocated to each file, and then they just consume those translations, making it very easy to work with, which I would highly recommend if you're using internationalization. Anyway, this wraps up the video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to like the video and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.